Welcome to this time of reflection and prayer. As we hear God's word, as we come together through St. Luke's Church, I want to welcome you today and to let you know that my name is Amy Spivey and I'm one of the pastors with St. Luke's. And I am grateful to be able to bring a word to you. As we have started a new series in this time of of spring and it is a series that is helping us to think about church. Why church? So I hope you've come ready today to hear a word of good news, especially if you are looking for a word of encouragement or, or guidance about what it means to follow Jesus. Of course, he wants us to know his love and to follow as closely as we can. So from the end of May through the month of June, we will ask, why church? This new series is for everyone. It's for you if you've been in church for a long time or a short time, or if you are brand new to church. I believe when we connect to church, it makes a difference in our lives for the better. And it also does that in the life of others. So I want to lead us into a better understanding about why that is, about how it happens So let's think of five ways that we can live out faith through presence, gifts, witness, prayers, and service. Now these also happen to be included in the promises we make when we commit our lives to Jesus and to the ministry of St. Luke's. We're going to celebrate Commitment Sunday in a couple of weeks. If you are interested in discovering more about being a Jesus follower, if you're interested in learning more about baptism, about becoming a a person who is committed to life and faith here with St. Luke's through membership. So why church? And for today, why does our presence in church matter? Simply stated, when we are present, we experience deep love and community. Now, the Bible is filled with stories that talk about people living together. And God created humanity for community. It's in community where God's love is most evident and is able to flourish. So I invite you to hear from Scripture an example of loving and flourishing community, which is rooted and grounded in the willingness and desire of people to be present. So hear this word of Scripture from Acts 2, 43 to 47. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Let us pray. God, we ask that you would open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as your word is read and proclaimed, that we might hear with joy what you have to say to us today. For it's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. This vision of Christian community gives us an example of what it means to be present Those who see signs and wonders find connection and belonging together. 
And this kind of connection and belonging are, I believe, essential to human life and health and well-being. Now, there are a myriad of circumstances and contexts where we can be present and find belonging in community. Often, it is a group that shares something in common. Maybe a neighborhood restaurant where we go frequently and become known and know others in that context. Maybe we, on a regular basis, go to our local YMCA and get to know people within that context. Maybe we're involved in a, in a school club or a civic organization like Civitans or the Rotary Club. Maybe we find belonging in, in places like this. You'll see this picture and the people who are in the midst of this space are sharing common ground. This is a picture at Duke University of Cameron Indoor Stadium where the men and women play basketball. It's often a joke that is said that in the shadow of Duke Chapel, there is also another place of worship. And so Cameron Indoor Stadium is one of those unique places. And I've had the opportunity to experience the togetherness of Cameron on a few occasions. Those folks who, who enter this stadium find common ground, I guess, unless you're a part of the, the visiting minority. And if a person has regular seats, they definitely begin to know the people around them. And as they wear that dark blue, they create community as a blue devil. They belong with each other. Yet really most of the people gathered, while they find common ground and even feel as though they belong, are simply a face in the crowd. So if we're thinking about those locales where we meet and see people, whether we're thinking about Cameron Indoor Stadium, those are definitely places that are important for connection and belonging. And they can be very meaningful in our lives. But if we are going to ask the question, why church? We must begin to see how our presence in church with church is different than in other places with other people in different contexts. Let's think a bit more about how being present in Christian community goes deeper than just common ground and makes us more than a face in the crowd. The unfolding of the story that we heard in Acts that I read just a few moments ago is a story that tells us about a community of people who are grounded in, as followers of Jesus. Now, the book of Acts is commonly known to be a continuation of the story that the gospel of Luke tells it's a story of the life, the ministry, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus' story, Jesus' leading, charts a new course for God's people. And Acts is known to account for the forming of the church. And if we understand the, the notion of church, it's not church as if it's a building, but church as the people. Now, with Jesus no longer with them, in the context of the story we hear, 
Peter, Jesus' closest friend and follower, leads the way in preaching and teaching in Jerusalem. They're literally sharing good news and continuing the ministry that Jesus started. Now, directly prior to the part of chapter 2 that we heard, Peter proclaims Jesus as Messiah. And simply, Messiah means the one who is chosen or anointed or set apart to save God's people, to offer them a new way in life. And in verse 36, 36, Peter says, Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. The proclamation by Peter moves the people. And as it's described a little further along in verse 37, it says that They believed and were baptized because they were cut to the heart. Now, to be cut to the heart, it's a rather unique turn of phrase in Scripture in the Bible. And it it means that they, they had an understanding of the saving grace of Jesus, that they turned their life towards him. They repented. And then in their belief, were baptized. Then it's important to hear what happens next. After they hear Peter proclaim Jesus as Messiah, and they are cut to the heart, understanding the grace of God in Jesus, they repent and turn their lives towards him, and they're baptized. It says in verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. This is a reflection of what is known in Scripture from a Greek word, Greek being that original language that the Bible uh, was was, um, written in, and the word that describes it is koinonia, fellowship, a unique kind of fellowship with Christian believers. And so in this fellowship. They heard the good news of God's love. They believed. They were baptized and they were connected to one another through their lives and faith with Jesus. And they became a part of a community. It's the same image of community that we hear and see from that text that we heard today from from chapter 2. Those people were moved to give their lives for Jesus and to live for him. And what is reflected is a life together where people are present with one another, all because of Jesus who changes lives and offers a way of love. Their presence creates a strong bond and transformative sense of belonging. And in Jesus, they belong to one another. They're together. They're generous, Scripture says. They care for one another, especially those in need. They worship together. They eat together. They praise God together. They find themselves, as we see this vision of community, they find themselves formed out of their love in Jesus. And we see something different, something deeper, something rooted and grounded in love. The kind of belonging that people experience through Jesus and community goes much further than simply common ground. And I would go so far as to say that presence in community for Jesus followers is essential. Being present with the church that the people who are together in Christian community creates belonging, but moreover opens our lives up to the depth of love in Jesus that's unique and life-changing. Being present with the church helps to keep us grounded and rooted in a flourishing life of faith. Being present with the church provides connections that give way to a depth of care 
and compassion. And we're, when we're committed to a life with Jesus and present, physically present in Christian community, we're more than just a face in the crowd. We're loved and cared for. And that is much different than the kind of belonging that happens in that common ground of togetherness in that sea of dark blue in Cameron Indoor Stadium or anywhere else where we might find ourselves around others. There's just something different than that togetherness and belonging that that happens with Jesus' followers and community. Now, Eugene Peterson, an author and minister, has gone so far as to say in his book, A Generous Savior, there can be no maturity in spiritual life, no obedience in following Jesus, no wholeness in the Christian life apart from an immersion in and embrace of community. I am not myself by myself. Our presence, one with another, being grounded and rooted in the love of Jesus matters. It makes a difference in our lives and in the lives of others. I see it through the community of St. Luke's as we, God's church, love one another, are present with one another. We find ourselves uplifted because of the ministry that we share. I've seen the the blessings that our bereavement team offers families in, in times of loss and grief. And that happens because we're present in life together and we're grounded in that love that that leads us into a life of care and compassion. I've seen it within the community of small groups who, who are present in the lives of one another, right? who see one another, who care for one another, who check on one another. Our congregational care ministers in many ways extend the love of Christ through cards and phone calls, through visits and through time spent with people in the hospital, through the celebrations of life. When we are present, we find connection. We experience belonging through deep love, care, and compassion. And we are more than just a face in the crowd. I've experienced it firsthand. And I've witnessed the love and care of Christian community. In one of the seasons of life in ministry for my family, we were not serving in the context of a local church. We were serving, serving in other community organizations and we had the opportunity to be a part of a church. And to do that, not as the pastor of the church, but instead as someone who was present in that community. And we were part of a small group, a group that met at least weekly, a group that, that out of a willingness to be present with one another, grew in faith and in friendship. And I remember that very last day when we were moving from that community, having been so blessed by the love of Jesus through our friends, we were preparing to pack the moving truck. And early on a Saturday morning came a a staggered arrival of friends from our small group in our church. 
And for the entirety of that day, they spent every moment helping us to clean and to pack. And my dear friend Arlene even cleaned our refrigerator, which was a remarkable gift. And so the life together that we shared, the presence that we offered one another, culminated into a day where the most mundane things were transformed into the greatest gifts that we could have been given, the gift of their time, their friendship, the gift of their service. What a remarkable experience. And that was only possible because we had shared a life together. We had been present one an- with one another, building relationships, experiencing a belonging that, that was deeply connected to love and care and compassion in Jesus. And it was very different very different than it might have been otherwise. I experienced that connection and that belonging because we were present. We were physically present in the community of faith and it made a difference in our lives. And we will be forever grateful for the generosity and the spirit and the love of those friends. So we offer an invitation to be present, to experience that love and that care and compassion that goes deeper than the things that we might experience in other places. Because when we experience presence, with one another in church changes our lives. It lifts us up. It offers us a a path of encouragement. It helps us to know that we are not alone. And I know that this kind of community, this kind of life together, this connection and belonging is alive and well with St. Luke's. And I want to invite you today to experience life in community, to be present, physically present, as we worship together, as we live life together in small groups, as we serve together. We have made available a expansive list of of ways that you might be present in the life and ministry and place of St. Luke's Church. We will share that with you. As we do that, um, we can share that online. We can offer that to you so that you might experience being present and knowing that you are more than a face in the crowd. We know that through Jesus, we can experience love and belonging, connection and community that goes deeper and transforms our lives in unique and amazing ways. So as we see this vision of community and acts, I pray that we will be present one with another, that you will know that that you are welcome the life of St. Luke's, and that hopefully we will be moved like those early Jesus followers to believe and to be drawn into life together. Because when we are, we will know that love, that care, and that compassion that transforms our lives. And I pray that you will find that. Find that through St. Luke's. We invite you and welcome you into the body together with each other through Jesus. Let us pray. God, we thank you that 
you call us to be present with one another. And that when we do that through Jesus, we experience a deeper love and we are truly more than just a face in the crowd. Help us, God, to step into places where we might be present with others so that not only can we share who we are, but others will share who they are with us. Help St. Luke's be a place of welcome. And God, help us to know that we can respond to Jesus, to believe and to belong. Lord, we pray that you would lead us and guide us every step of the way in him. For we pray this in your holy name. Amen.